Hello and welcome back to Mark on Motoring, any regular viewers and welcome to anyone who's new here. So once again I'm at the motorist but this time on a Sunday, the first time since pre-pandemic that I've actually been here on a Sunday. Um, as you can probably hear it's very very windy, um, even though I've got my lavalier mic it's probably still picking up a lot of wind noise. Um, but at least it's dry today, um, ground is still a bit sodden because it did pretty much rained all day yesterday but anyway back to the reason we're here the latest James Bond film has just been released to celebrate that they've uh, encouraged some Aston Martin owners to bring the vehicles down I believe there may also um, be some cars supplied by a dealer if I read correctly but uh, I'm gonna go have a look around shortly and see what I can see of course Aston Martins are not the only thing that's here today they're uh, quite a mix of cars as always including something that's just caught my eye this uh, fabulous looking polo g40 so without further ado we'll uh, switch the camera angle around and we'll have a good look around see what's here so we've got k registration which will be around 1993 uh, volkswagen polo uh, the g40 version as well so really something uh, quite special if you're the owner of any of the cars that I feature here today and you would be interested in perhaps uh, filming a little more please do let me know in the comments I'd be uh, possibly quite interested to come and film oh, look at this, this fabulous mini and it's had the uh, headlamp conversion as well something we saw lots of at Festival Italia was uh, Fiat Barchetta uh, as mentioned previously all left-hand drive as well on these cars though they were sold through UK dealers and this one looks fabulous in uh, yellow as well and with the roof down so we can get a nice view inside the car as well look at that so we've got a uh, rev counter in the middle right in front of the driver with the speedometer to the left and your uh, other gauges positioned to the right and a dashboard that slightly favours the driver. I never noticed before as well is uh, we know with the Fiat Coupe they have the use of uh, coloured parts on the dash, something that they do today with the 500 but uh, if we look at the lower part of the dash and doors here it's got body colour as well. It's quite an interesting styling touch. Or it may be that you prefer your roadster's mid-engined, something like this MGTF. Obviously, we quite often see triumphs at any sort of uh, car event, and uh, here we've got a stag with the hard top fitted, which is uh, something I can't say I've seen, or certainly not for a while. So very nice, a very uh, period typical colour as well, I would have thought. That was uh, very nice. Very nicely trimmed interior as well. Oh, what about a Type 25 derived uh, Volkswagen camper? I see a Carmen coach built model. The BMW 730. Uh, we have seen some uh, earlier 7 series on the channel before it shows, but uh, first time seeing one of this generation. I actually did quite like the style of these. In fact, I actually really like the the 5 series, which looked almost identical from this era. Um, was basically just looked like a slightly shrunken version. Uh, as I say, we, the uh, there is an event on here today for uh, Aston Martin. And first one I've come across today is this DB9. drive a DB9 at one of these um, test day things a few years ago sadly it was the hottest day of the year and the air conditioning was broke so that did take away the enjoyment somewhat also we only had a few laps of a very short uh, track to actually get a feel for the car I'd also driven a uh, 911 turbo that day and a Lamborghini and by comparison the Aston did feel somewhat heavy but perhaps that's unfair because compared to the other two this uh, really is more of a GT car. Now again you can turn up in pretty much anything to one of these events. So we've got a Mini there, Micra, 
Toyota Celica. Uh, now these are getting to that age again where they're probably quite cheap and uh, many of them are quite heavily modified. I've never seen that done before. I don't know if this is showing up, but we've got a uh, transparent fuel filler flap cover there with the actual cap behind. The modification I've never seen done before. But yeah, this is uh, all the bumpers and everything, the big wing, this has been quite extensively modified by the look of it. We've got an Alfa Romeo Brera. These are uh, becoming increasingly appealing, I find. Again, possibly not the most dynamic car that Alfa Romeo have ever uh, produced, but quite a striking design. Do love the uh, well, the front and rear lamps on there. Looks like this one's been to Mick car as well. An Alpha 4C, an always popular at events. And the window slightly open on this, so we might be able to get a good view inside. The uh, Golf R Mark 8. And another Aston. Some carbon bits on this on the mirrors, the door handles. I do like that dark panel across the rear as well. It gives the car a slightly different look. Here we have a Vantage S. I don't know if it's showing very well on camera, but this is a, a black, but it's sort of a, a metallic, got like a fleck, metallic fleck in it. It's quite a nice finish. Audi R8. I do like the colour on this one. Oh, an XC90 hiding behind that uh, MX5 in this really quite a nice bright purple colour. I don't know if that's a standard. Uh, oh, it's actually it's a two tone look. The front is a different colour, but with purple accents on the car. Nicely done. Audi RS6 oh. and we're coming a little bit more up to date now with the Astons that really is stunning I do like how this uh, tail kinks up there's a fantastic shade of blue this actually really suits the car I think uh, not that I see myself ever owning one of these but if I did I think I may well choose this colour now these wheels we've got uh, wrapped in Pirelli P0, they're absolutely enormous. Can we see what size are on those? We've got the detailing in these calipers, enormous um, groove brake discs. I think those brake discs are possibly as big as the wheels on my car. So that's a 20 inch wheel. Obviously we've got this black, I don't think it's carbon. No this uh, black split around the bottom which incorporates into this lip around the grille so when I've seen these on video I weren't overly fussed but actually in the metal it's quite a nice piece of design so we've got a few more Audis, a couple of TT's here in various generations got the Mark 2 and the original Mark 1 These are quite an interesting piece of design as well when they first came out. I'm not sure the single exhaust, I think this could be the 1.8. I don't think they were all Quattro either. So this may well be a, a base spec car. Of course I could be wrong, perhaps you're the owner of this car. Uh, if so, let me know in the comments. I'd be uh, interested to know what spec this one is quite striking in this white. Again, we've got some more Audis. 
just as a side note see work is progressing here at the motorist since the last time I was here only a few weeks ago so this huge building behind is going to house the restaurant um, I'm not sure if the showroom's moving into there as well it looks like there's going to be some big changes and quite a welcome extension to the car park as well obviously previously they've had quite a small car park and a huge field at the back so that will be interesting to see I think by next uh, spring I think that's going to be done so another Audi Mercedes from MGB GT so it's lovely MGB GT now uh, I think this is one of the sort of intermediate cars looking at that grill design unless it's a rubber bumper that's been backdated I'm, I'm not up on them enough to know but, uh, I think that could be a modern radio as well that's styled like a traditional one I think the dashboard could be earlier than rubber bumper, but again, I'm not entirely sure. Looks like an interesting project. Very nice. I've got another DB9, and probably the colour that we know these cars most for as well. And we do like seven derived cars. I couldn't tell you which one this is based on, but uh, oh, this one will be fun if it's got a uh, Honda Type R power in it. Very nice. We've got a handy little fire extinguisher in the middle of there as well. Ooh, those seats don't look very forgiving. They're, uh, are they pressed metal? Or some sort of composite? Yeah, the, the yellow parts look uh, basically solid with a basically a cushion on. But then again, you don't buy a seven derived car for uh, comfort. I imagine what it lacks in comfort, it more than makes up for in fun. But a BMW E30 Coupe. Looking very period on those crossbow wheels, but uh, I'd say they're a lot wider than the ones that came on the car. A nice looking interior, we've got a dash mat there, which uh, probably helps keep the sun off and stop it cracking. Nice black leather interior as well. Yeah, bear in mind these cars being from the uh, 1980s are sort of 30 odd, pushing 40 years old now. Porsche Boxster. This is really, really quite something. An Aston Martin DB24. I imagine if you were rocked up in this in the 1950s, it really was something. Probably even more so today. Looks like this car has uh, won a few shows, perhaps as well, and I can fully understand why. So this is what you come to these kind of events for: the modern prestige and supercars are um, an increasingly common sight on our roads today. But stuff like this, even um, in period, would have, I would imagine, would have probably been quite a rare sight. Now back to something more modern, let's see if we can get this right, is, I believe this could be a DBS. Vanquish S. Oh well, we're nearly right, had an S in it. Never noticed before that uh, integrated rear spoiler as well, it's quite nice. Got a carbon roof on this car as well. Uh, lots of carbon down here as well on these side skirts and mirrors Even the bonnet gills and the uh, front splitters carbon 
I would be petrified every time I came to a speed bump in one of those, I think. But it really does look the part. Also, these side gills, I just noticed, are, uh, which again are in carbon, but the line is extended in, back into this door, which I think is a really nice styling touch as well. And is that that's four wheel drive? Though? Four wheel drive, yeah, it's stage two, 770. Um, you don't need any more than that, do you? So I've just had a look at those lovely vanquishers and now we've got a DB7 Volante. Looks uh, fabulous in this silver. Uh, part next to that we've also got a BMW M3. Got a Aston Rapid that's just started up behind as well. That uh, V12 sounds fabulous. I've got another Vantage. So these are uh, a little more sports car than uh, than the DB9, which is obviously more of a GT version. A DBS. And it's the Super Legera version as well. Possibly the first time I've seen one of these. So we've got this, uh, I don't know, it's coming out on camera, but this is a really, really dark sort of maroon metallic shade. Couldn't tell you what it's called, but uh, in areas that are more under shadow, it's, it's uh, like a really dark, almost, uh, well, maybe not quite black, but uh, really, really deep purple. And as you can see, we've got this uh, intake at the back here, and this lovely bit of... Uh, gloss black trim that extends all the way to the back here and along the bottom edge of that window and to this mirror obviously the gills still remain in an Aston Martin but the design's changed a little bit I believe these are actually to vent trapped air from within the wheel arches So and we thought the wheels were big on that other car, we've got 21 inch uh, wheels on this car. Huge brakes with, oh, we have got not one but two calipers on these uh, drilled and vented discs. Absolutely enormous, there should be no problem stopping that car. Porsche Cayman S. Now, I'm a big fan of the Cayman, well in fact of the Boxster, um, and I, uh, when the Caymans, the first gen models came out, I was uh, very very keen, but uh, sadly it wasn't to be. Another Boxster coming in. It's a uh, second generation, if you don't count the uh, facelift that we've done earlier. Got another Vantage. I've got this lovely V8. Genuine plate or show plate, I couldn't be sure, but certainly be fitting of the car. Now, the Aston V8, I believe, um, appeared in Living Daylights. I know in an earlier film, there was a very similar looking uh, DBS as well. Because the front end on those are slightly different with the square lamps and the flat uh, top. With this design going back to the uh, trademark Aston Martin grille something very different here we've got uh, something from over the pond in America 
again, couldn't tell you much about it. I believe it's a Chevy. Ah, it's an Impala. Now look at that for an interior. So much red. What those pods with the recess gauges in. Lots and lots of chrome. Visibility is brilliant because the uh, all the pillars, you've got this wrapped around windscreen and all the, the pillars are so thin. We've got no B pillar at all. All we've got is the these very slender uh, A pillar and then the what would be the C pillars. It looks like this passenger could have been waiting for quite some time. I've got lots of cars coming and going. There was a lot left before I arrived and some leaving now. We've got the G40. And the Caddy. And again, there's still more. We've got another DB9 next to another DB9. This one I really, really like. We've got the uh, this sort of a grey green with yellow accents. This actually looks really, really nice. We've got the green in the Aston badge as well. It's a really nice, uh, nice touch. A, another Vanquish S. Oh, now this I like very much. We've got uh, another Vanquish S. Uh, this one, an earlier one, from a period um, Aston had been criticised somewhat with the DB7 um, due to its connections to the uh, Jaguar. But uh, when this car came out, and it, it was uh, the first modern Aston uh, to feature in a Bond film with uh, Piers Brosnan um, and obviously the styling of the DB9 sort of echoed this that came after so there was a few little foibles that the uh, motoring press uh, critiqued this car on but uh, yeah, overall it really set the uh, direction that Aston was going in for everything that's come since and still a really stunning design all these years on. And I don't think words can really describe this. Uh, we've got sort of a matte green finish. Um, or a satin finish on here. Obviously uh, lots of aero, including the wing on the back. Uh, so F1 edition. So another DBS with the uh, this time we can see the 5.2 litre twin turbo V12 and from memory I think the uh, these twin turbos are putting out about 700 horsepower or thereabouts as opposed to the around 500 horsepower on some of the other models 500 horsepower there was a time where if you had a couple of hundred horsepower you were in something really rapid 22 inch wheels on that oh smell that leather AMG V8 compressor. Didn't see that when I was walking around.
So it's been another interesting uh, day out here at the motorist as always. I've seen lots of fantastic cars. My battery is running somewhat low so I'm going to uh, get my camera out and I think I'm going to take a few photos and uh, may even partake in some refreshments because we've got the Blue Train Cafe but we've also now got this um, snack van that's open as well. So uh, yeah, why have an all, you're at a motorist place so you know by all means let's um, let's get some food from a big old Bedford. So obviously some of the events might be drying up a little bit now as we head towards winter but uh, I'm hoping I might still get a few more in uh, sometime soon. I've also got a Halloween special planned as well, um, a short video there so please do remember to hit like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of the future videos that are coming along very soon. Thanks again for watching and goodbye until next time.